Now, if you're asking me, at the end of the age, when the son subjects himself to the father, what does that mean? So we got that out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean he doesn't reign with the father. If that's what you're trying to get at. Are you trying to figure out, does that mean that Christ ceases to reign? No. Okay. We, so then yeah. We I see revelation. He still reigns. Well, yeah. Okay. So then the subjection means that when he destroys all opposition and he reconciles creation to God fully. So there is no more opposition. There are no more enemies that oppose God's will, bringing destruction, evil, and sin into the world. Because that's now eradicated. Christ has now destroyed that. The subjection to the Father is for the purpose of bringing everything in perfect union with the Godhead. So when he destroys the enemies of God and destroys the last enemy, he comes in full submission to the Father so that with the Father, he now rules over a creation that's perfectly united to God and no more opposition. I see. So that subjection is for the purpose of coming in union with the Father so that with the Father and the Spirit, they fully rule over creation in perfect union and harmony. Yes, that's amazing. That's what it means. Because the God who is all in all is not just the Father. The God who is all in all Includes Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm going to prove it to you. Because reread 1 Corinthians 15, 28 again. Focus, brethren. I hope you're learning this because this is deep stuff. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything A under A more it. better translation, it's not the Son will be made subject. A more accurate translation, it's called the middle passive voice, where the Son will subject himself. The Son will subject himself. Okay, so he chooses. Yes. Okay. So that God may be all in all. Okay, so God all in all. Now, what does it mean that God will be all in all? Now, guys, this is theology. If you get distracted, you won't learn. God will be all in all means when all opposition is destroyed, God will be in perfect communion, fellowship with everything and everyone. All in all means perfect fellowship and communion with everything, everyone, no more opposition. So who's going to be all in all? In perfect fellowship, communion with everything, everyone. No more opposition. No more hostility. It says God. But does that God include the Son? Yeah. Go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. Colossians 3, verse 11. <clears throat> Remember that phrase. God will be all in all. Are you learning theology? Because you got to learn what these terms mean. Colossians, Colossians 3, 11. Okay. Do you want me to read it? No, I want, hold on, I'm going to call Michael to read it. Hold on. Guys, this is the, oh, wait, wait. This is the second guy asked me to read it. No, no, I, now I asked Gabriel. Do you want me to call and ask Uriel to write it? Because I have a connection. No, please, no. You want me to butch, have Butch to read it? No, I got it. Okay, Colossians 3.11. Here there is no Gentile or Jew. Here so in Christ, it's talking about believers. In Christ, when you're the body of Christ, read it out loud. In Christ. What? There is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but you Christ is all. Barbarian? I knew you are barbaric. So what it's saying, when you're in Christ, baptized in Christ, it doesn't matter that you're a Jew or a Greek or a barbarian or a Scythian. What else? Slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Did you hear that last line? Christ is what? In all, it and is all. Isn't that the same language used in 1 Corinthians 15, 28? God will be all in all? Beautiful. Okay, do you guys catch the connection? What the church experiences now, if you're baptized in Christ and in submission, is what the world will experience at the end. Right now, Paul is saying, if you're baptized in Christ, it doesn't matter you're a Jew or a Greek, free or slave, male or female, barbarian, Scythian. When you're baptized in Christ, Christ is in perfect fellowship with all of you. He loves all of you. And you have the same access to Christ that everyone else does. If you submit to the spirit and not resist the spirit and plunge in sin. He's all and is all to all who are in him and submit to him. 
That's what Paul is saying. At the end of the age, all opposition will be destroyed. Death will be destroyed. Satan will be destroyed. The wicked will be destroyed. Sin will be destroyed. So that those who believe will be transformed, made morally incorruptible, so that now God will be in perfect fellowship with everything and everyone. And we get a taste of that now in Christ when we're baptized in Christ. But if Christ is all and is everything to everyone, then that means he's included in the identity of that God who will be all in all. 